Hey everybody and welcome back. In this video we're going to look at some of the basics of using Lightroom and generally just how to make some very quick changes that will allow you to get on and start your post processing experience for one of a better way of putting it. Before I get started though I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed. If you haven't yet done that feel free to hit the subscribe button, give us a notification as well so that you'll know when I've uploaded some new content. Let me know what you think in the comments below if there's any topics you want me to specifically cover and of course give us a thumbs up if you like my content. Thanks again to everybody who has followed uh, me on Patreon. If, uh, if you are a patron, your name will be running across the bottom of the screen right now. So shout out to those people. Thanks very much. You guys are awesome. So let's jump right into this then. Now, if this were a photography tutorial, then the first port of call would be to talk about flagging and organizing your photos in such a way that you could work better in the editorial process i.e picking which photos you want to edit and which ones you don't however because we're not doing that essentially i'm going to assume that if you've spent time 20 minutes half an hour four hours however long it's taken to render an image that you don't need to go through the editorial process you've already got the images that you want to edit so we're going to skip over all of that and go straight into the editing process. So we're going to come straight out of the library tab and into the develop tab. So we're going to click on where it says develop up here. And then immediately we're going to see a lot of stuff. Now, if you are new to Lightroom, then your layout will probably be more like this. Um, the only reason I've got obviously the presets tab open is because I have got a lot of presets that I've created and downloaded and just got, you know, from all corners of the globe, picked them up and you can find them all over the internet as well. Don't feel like you have to do all of this manually. If you can find presets to download, then grab them. It doesn't hurt to have quick clicks. This is where all the presets live on the left hand tab. The navigator is obviously where you see a thumbnail. Uh, of your image and you can choose which areas you want to zoom in on by clicking and as you can see when I click then it switched to one to one so you've got fit which fits the whole image inside the preview pane you've got fill which means that it will fill but you'll obviously be cropping out bits of the image either on the top or the sides one to one if you want to see it at its full resolution and then a three to one if you want to zoom in even more so we keep on fit mainly most of the time now on the right hand side we've got some pretty cool widgets as you can see the histogram which is obviously uh, for those of you who do know anything about photography this is kind of where you'd be looking to check your exposure to check all of your details uh, in the middle and not at the end and I'm going to quickly talk about how the histogram relates to HDR images and the human eye essentially what this represents is the light range of a JPEG image or a computer screen. So this is at the point where everything is black and at this point is where everything is white, i.e. too dark to have any detail and too bright to have any detail. And so you want all of your detail to be between those. The human eye has a much, much wider range. So let's say that this is dead center you know, the human eye would be, the black point would be somewhere down here and the white point would be somewhere off two or three inches off to the right hand side of the screen. So what an HDR image does is it takes three different exposures, i.e. it takes, say, a darker exposure, which would give you detail in this area and a lighter exposure, which would give you images or uh, detail into the bright areas off to the right. And it crunches all of that information down to fit inside this little bracket of, of light range, basically, to give you the illusion of viewing it more with the human eye, i.e. you get more detail inside your JPEG. Now, the illusion works to a certain point, but you're never going to get an image that completely represents what the human eye is capable of simply because computer displays do not have the same dynamic range as the human eye will. So that's a little bit of science for you. <laughs> if you found that confusing, don't worry. A lot of people struggle with that. 
So the next thing we want to look at is this image, this, this tool here. This is the crop tool. If you click on that, you get a crop tool that you can actually shrink. And as you can see, the preview on the left hand side changes. If you just drag the edges or the corners of this image around, you can change the crop and then you can see what it's going to look like in the left. So if you're not 100% happy with the way you've cropped an image, then you can change that using this tool. And you can also do a bit of rotation in here as well. You could rotate it if you wanted to give you more of an action shot. And then once you've got the uh, the crop that you want, you can hit done or you can just press escape if you don't want to, you know, if you want to exit out of that tool. So I'm going to talk about these tools in later videos because these are kind of getting into a little bit more advanced editing. So we're going to come on into the basic section and this is really what we're going to focus on in this video. The first thing we've got here is the white balance and obviously because we didn't shoot these in a camera the white balance isn't going to be too much of an issue. However, if you were using a preloaded scene that you've bought from the DAS store or another place other stores are available um, then obviously the light may not be completely white and the human eye and the brain are very very good at translating light that isn't completely white to still not mess with skin tones for by that I mean that if for example the light was very warm you might think okay well your human eye is still seeing skin tone there but the image looks yellow so you would click on this dropper tool here and you click on something that's white in the image you need to find something that's there you go and now it's fixed the the color of the the light so that it looks more natural essentially that's what it does so you can fix your white balance using the dropper tool or you can adjust it using the temp and the tint sliders here to get your color balance a little bit more natural looking now if you hit auto tone it's going to make adjustments i recommend that you don't do that because it's going to look for things in the image and because it's a computer generated image it's not going to be as accurate at finding the right things in the image to set the tone so we're going to do it manually so if you wanted to brighten the image obviously you've got your exposure here you can click on the slider and drag it or you can even click on the number and you can drag it up and down and that just changes the exposure and then if you click on the uh, number and then let go you can set the number manually so i just type in zero because the exposure is more or less correct in that one and then contrast obviously that's the difference between your highlights and your shadows and as you can see if you slide that up and down it's fairly self-explanatory that's your contrast now if you've got an image that you want to crunch the blacks and the whites to make it look a little bit less contrasty you can also adjust your highlights and shadows there as you can see now all the detail in the shadows has come in it kind of looks a bit weird though to me to my eye it's too much detail you need to get the balance just right on the highlights and shadows there and then obviously your whites and the blacks just you can make your image look really muddy and gray if you want to by changing these up and down so that's changing your white point and your black point basically then we come down here and to be honest most of these you're not going to want to play around with um, clarity is just going to pump more detail into it and make it look kind of crunchy and i suppose if you wanted to have your images look in that specific grunt kind of edgy style that's a great slider to play with um, to be honest, it depends on personal preference really. Most of these settings are going to be personal preference and I really encourage you to have a bit of a play, come into Dam to Lightroom with your images and play around with these sliders because, because it's non-destructive editing, you can always revert back to the original. There's nothing you can do on these sliders that you can't undo because it's not affecting the original at all. Now vibrance and saturation are quite good things to play with. If you want to make your images look a bit more colorful, a little bit more punchy, you can drag the vibrance up. If you want the overall color saturation to improve, then obviously you can drag that up as well. And we can obviously click on the numbers to set them back to zero as much as we want. Now the reason that I'm kind of making this series is because I want you to understand how very easy it is to create these 
image styles that you often see a lot of developers using. Um, when you sort of ask them how they've achieved a certain look, they make it sound like they've used witchcraft or it's some kind of amazing knowledge that they've got that nobody else has got. And it's really not. I mean, it's so easy to make your images look a certain way. And a common, a common kind of look that a lot of people go for is this kind of cross-processed, crushed look. And it's such an easy look to create. And yet you get people who sell actions to make images look like this on Photoshop and it's bonkers to me. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you come into Tone Curve here, you can see you've got Point Curve set to Linear, Channels RGB, so you're affecting all channels equally. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the top of the line and we're gonna bring that down, maybe not much, a little bit. And then we're gonna do the same. Oh, if you bring in a point, you can always just, we're going to remove the control point like that by right clicking. Now that we've got that, we're going to drag up the blacks as well, like that. Maybe make some minor adjustments. If we create a point in the middle and we just drag it up brightness wise a little bit. Now, as you can see, that's created this kind of almost misty effect. And then we're going to come down into the next tab and we can see HSL and color here. If we go below that, you can see split toning and we can select highlights and shadow colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the highlights and make them look a little bit more yellow. And then I'm going to change the shadows and make them look a little bit more blue. And as you can see, that is an effect not dissimilar. And this is bearing in mind like 10 seconds of editing. If I fine tuned it, I could get it exactly correct. But this is basically an image look that um, certain content creators on the Dash Studio store are trying to convince you to pay 20 bucks for an action that does that. And I've cre recreated the look in seconds. So definitely get in here, have a play with these knobs. I will give you like a more in depth um, set of tutorials about what all of these settings do and how you can play around with them and manipulate them to make your looks and then save them as presets. Um, but for that, we're going to go into more depth. So for this video, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.